Hello and welcome to Expat Lifestyle with Bads. For those who have subscribed, thank you very much. And for those who are watching for the first time, I hope you can take something from this episode. Because that's what it's all about with me, trying to, to share my experiences and, um, and give you something worthwhile. Oh, behind me, the Duomo. What a fabulous view. This is what I can see from my balcony. It's not too far away. And this episode is all about the views. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a short walk past the Duomo, through the Republica, the Piazza Vecchio, over the Ponte Vecchio Bridge, a walk along the Arno, through San Nicolo, and then up the hill to the Piazzale Michelangelo, where the views are spectacular. Look, I've been up to the top of Duomo, and the views there are great. On the top of Piazzale Michelangelo, you get to view the city with the Duomo in it, and it's spectacular. It's a must visit. Okay, so, andiamo. Let's go. So look, as we approach, it just gets better and better, doesn't it? It really is spectacular. How did they build that back in the late 13th century? The dome, never been built before. If you're so inclined, the carriages, this is the meeting point. So they take you around the historical centre. They're having a bit of a feed now, good on them, good on them. They're very well trained by the way, those horses. As I said, it's, it's crowded, isn't it? But it's pretty typical, it's pretty typical. Long line to get in, it's free to get in, long line. So what I book a tour. So it's a skip the line tour to get into the Duomo and also skip the line tour to climb the dome itself. Just spectacular, isn't it? Just spectacular. The pink, green, white marble, the bell tower there. And of course behind me, the posterity just here. Just wonderful. So the Duomo designed by Brunelleschi, they began construction in the late 13th century. It took over 100 years to complete. And did you know, did you know, the site of the Duomo itself was built over a 7th century chapel. And you can still see that down in the crypt. That's worth a visit. Okay, so the plaque behind me shows you the height of the 1966 floods. It's about my height there. I'm 5'11". Okay, 178 centimetres. So imagine the water level, what the damage it would have done. So did you know Michelangelo's David, the plan was to originally put his masterpiece of work up in that alcove there, which in my opinion would have been wasted. And of course, you can now see the original David in the Academia Galleria, or a copy in Piazza Vecchio, or up on the Piazzale Michelangelo, there's a bronze copy of David. So see up there, the gold cross. Back in the day, that was hit by lightning. The cross and ball fell to the ground. Now, X doesn't mark the spot, but it's a white circle over here that does and shows where that landed. Hey, let's have a look. It's just over here. Okay, so there we go there. Okay, so you'd be unlucky if you were standing here when that hit. Right, so I'll leave the spiritual centre of Florence now and head to the commercial centre of Florence, known as Republica. Let's go this way. Lots of rustic laneways. That's wonderful. So Republica's just ahead now. Some lovely little cafes. Everyone's out and about. It's one of those carriages I talked about. The carousel, you can see that coming up and the carousel is in the Republica, the commercial centre, or historical commercial centre of Florence. Okay, so I'm standing in Republica, which is really the the centre of Florence since Roman times. Today, 
got the carousel so the kids and the older kids enjoy that. And it's really surrounded by nice little cafes, uh, Gilly Cafe over behind me there, quite famous for its pastries. And the Savoy Hotel is behind me too. Um, disappointingly, in the 18th century, most of the medieval buildings were taken down. You know, they had that period where I guess the old historical buildings were no longer appreciated back in this 18th century. Great shame. Lovely piazza. But for me, it's, it's a square that I sort of walk through towards another destination. We'll go to Piazza Vecchio next, which is the political centre of Florence. Uh, this building here, it's a beautiful building. So this building was an old wool guild. A huge industry back in medieval times. The guilds became very powerful. And I originally thought the Medici families were obviously part of a big guild, but no, no, no. They were smarter than that. The Medici families were bankers. That's where they made all their money. They controlled Florence for centuries. What about the building next door? Just fantastic. Now on top of that is a rooftop bar. I've been up there, I'll tell you what, um, drinks aren't cheap, that's for sure. Uh, the little leather markets, Florence and leather, go <laughs> hand in hand. Hey, I priced a little computer bag today at the Mercato Central, the central. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Very friendly too, they want to drag me in. Anyway, I priced a computer bag um, at the Mercato Centrale, the central market, 150 euro. That was just a bit of a, a taster for me, so I've got a ballpark now, but I reckon I can get that down significantly. Look out for that in a future episode. So I'm coming around the corner, and we're going to see Il Porcellino. Il Porcellino, the piglet. But of course, we never call a boar a pig. Remember the Lion King? He's got to be called Mr. Pig, of course. Anyway, coin in the mouth, the coin drops into the grate. You get good luck. Rub the snout, and you come back to Florence. Look at the snout. It's, it's worn so shiny, isn't it? Imagine how many hands have been rubbing that snout. Now, this was first cast in the 1600s. This is obviously not the original. Not the original. There's a marble original from Roman times, which is in the Uffizi Museum. This one's been reproduced a few times, as recently as 2008. A great attraction for everyone. Very popular tourist site, this one, as you can see. And squizzy. And straight ahead, the Pazzo Vecchio. So that's where I'm heading now. And of course, there's a copy of David. Michelangelo's David. We just pan back a little bit. And the building in front. The government buildings. The mayor presently works there, but it's been the the political centre of, of Florence for many centuries. The Medici family lived there for quite some time and actually had their corridor built from here across the Arno over the Ponte Vecchio and up to their Pitti Palace. So they didn't have to walk with the common people. Look at this view through here. I've been here a couple of times actually. It's always, always a good one. There we go. Nice. Okay, so I'm just walking towards the Uffizi Museum now. And it took me like 10 minutes. Very atmospheric through here. It's a huge collection, so if you love your medieval art, this is where you need to come. Include this in your itinerary. And obviously some, a lot of contemporary artists too. Trying to cash in, trying to cash in. So here's the entrance to the Uffizi, just over here. Always busy, always busy. And through the arch here, the Arno River, and to my right, the Ponte Vecchio. Really destroyed in 1345 with the severe floods. Now, can you see the corridor above? That's what the Medicis had built back in the 1500s, because they didn't want to walk across that bridge, because it was smelly. Butchers, fishmongers, 
tannery. Now, well, later in the 1500s, uh -huh. a new law was implemented whereby the only shops allowed were gold shops and jewellery shops, and they still exist today. So the Ponto Vecchio will be packed today. You have a look. So we'll just turn around. And there we go behind me. Okay, as you can see, very, very crowded. That's for sure. Now I was just thinking, I was just thinking, if you're planning your itinerary to visit Florence, try not to make it on a weekend. Because on the weekend, many Italians from other cities come to Florence. You know, just for a getaway. Um, or to visit and see the history for themselves too. So it is slightly less crowded on the on weekdays. So that's something to consider when you're planning a trip here. So up until 1218, this was the only bridge that crossed the Arno in Florence. And as I said, in 1345, destroyed in these massive floods. It survived the 1966 floods, by the way. I try to go early morning, later evening. It's a very romantic spot. Of course, I take my wife there all the time. So I'm just walking back to the apartment now. I'm gonna have a cup of tea, something to eat. Um, and then I'm gonna walk back to the Piazzale Michelangelo. The lookout overlooking Florence and show you that view. Just spectacular. Probably saw this horse and cart at Gioamo. And they're now in Tornaboni. Nice little way to see the city. So I'm on Ponte Vecchio. On my way to Pizzali Michelangelo. And as, you can, and as you can see, very, very busy. For all the jewellery shops, the gold shops are open. I remember that was um, by decree back in the 16th century when they got rid of the butchers and the fishmonger shops. That used to stink the place out. Bridge, there's the Medici corridor, and that leads up to the Pitti Palace which is straight ahead, probably about 400 metres. And look, behind me, I'm just crossing the road, is Signor Vino. It's a nice little restaurant, and those who have seen that episode. It's a great restaurant if you want to get a balcony overlooking Ponte Vecchio. And look, I'm just going to leave the Arno River a little bit and walk towards San Nicolo and then Piazzale Michelangelo along this laneway here. It's a lovely little walk. So when I get to San Nicolo, my plan is I'm going to get a spritz. I think I deserve it. Uh, on my own today, my, my wife, she's at a function. A bit boring, a bit boring, I think. Um, so, leave pass. So what do I do? Oh, I'll go get some footage um, for an episode. But look, I enjoy doing this, and uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoy watching um, what I deliver. So this laneway runs parallel with the Arno. Which is just at the end of that street there. It's just a bit, it's just a different route to take. The river's lovely, I must say, but um, it's just an alternative option. As, as you can see, it's a, a very popular thoroughfare, isn't it? Pretty laneway too. So I've just come off via San Nicolò. And this is part of the old city wall, medieval wall, protective wall. Keep the bad guys out. Okay, so through these gates and we head up the hill. It's a solid climb. Um, we head up the hill to Pitts Alley, Michelangelo. So I'm just thinking, before I start the trek up, might need some refreshments. Fantastic, isn't it? Just the history. Oh, I might get a drink over here, I think. Dying of thirst. Okay, and here we have it. It's a little tip. That's better. Okay, so heading up the hill now. That, that spritz was six euro or C Edo in China. That's a symbol for six, not hang loose. Anyway, it's a pretty solid climb now. Okay, so some might say head down and just push up but got to remember to stop at vantage points and check out the view 
So just a little glimpse of what's in store for us. That's where this is the road that comes up. Not easy. I think it's steeper than the, the other way to come up, which is from the um, Piazza Giuseppe Poggi, which is from the Arno. Beautiful. And that is the Basilica San Miniato. It goes back to, it dates back to the 11th century. Okay, so that's the climb. We made it up. Yeah, a little bit of a light sweat just starting to happen. So um, anyway, it's well worth it. A room with a view? No, you don't need it. Just come up here. Hey, listen to that. Here we go. Basilica San Miniato. Just behind me. Okay, so here I am on the Piazzale Michelangelo, the lookout, the scenic lookout overlooking Florence. I'm going to get over there in a minute and show you, but here we have a replica of um, David just behind me, Michelangelo's David. And, and look, the architect who designed this scenic lookout intended the Alogia behind me to be a museum, but it's actually a restaurant and cafe. He designed this and it was built in 1869, so it's fairly recent, isn't it, really? In terms of Renaissance Florence and so on but what a vantage point what a view we get to see and you've just got to remember the history here the birthplace of learning Renaissance it all started here in Florence didn't it the art the science Michelangelo Galileo Galilei and of course Leonardo da Vinci and so many more so many more what this place has delivered is just huge isn't it it's iconic it's iconic so let's head over I'll share some views with you um, and I hope you enjoy okay so sunset's still a little way away there's the Ponte Vecchio the bridge behind that Santa Trinita <laughs> then we've got the Piazza Vecchio the big tower there the big tower the, the political center the political center of Florence and of course the Duomo the spiritual center the Arno River in the foreground and then the Santa Croce <laughs> church and within that church we have buried such greats like Michelangelo himself and Galileo Galilei just wonderful so this is certainly a must on your visit to Florence Piazzale Michelangelo sunset any part of the day doesn't really matter great vantage point isn't it to see all of Florence always a wonderful view that one isn't it but I'll show you the view around the corner here with the crowds okay so that's pretty typical of an evening on sunset big group sitting there on the steps sometimes there's a, a street entertainer down here getting the crowd singing but um, everyone's arrived with a little bit of alcohol whether it's vino some some beer some beer um, it's very atmospheric up there and it's a great night had by all so Piazzale Michelangelo so do you need a room with a view no just come up here so I was just thinking um, very romantic up here I wonder how many how many proposals have happened I wonder what the stats are I'm betting That'd be pretty high. So I'm going to walk down the alternative way. So this is walking down to the Arno River, down to the Piazza Giuseppe Poggi. He was the architect who designed uh, Piazzale Michelangelo. I think it's an easier, it's certainly coming up, I think it's an easier way to come up. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, a bit of a mountain goat going the other way. Pretty steep coming up from San Nicolo. So my thoughts are, I'm calling this episode a room with a view. The irony is, you don't need a room with a view because there's so much to look at outside the room, so don't bother. Expat Lifestyle with Bads. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please, thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifications on. Hey, see you next episode. Ciao.